We've got Charlie the King versus Tarek, like we said, and Charlie at Switchfest almost took it over Shuton. Yes. Yeah, he was really close, but I was unable to take it. Well, Lamar caused a little bit too many problems, but like you said earlier, really impressive to see these two players fight already, and we got Tarek on this Greninja. Okay, so, you know, I would expect this is Pokemon Trainer. We're not gonna see it right now. We it's might Pokemon. see it. We might see it a little. There is still a Pokemon. We're still on Pokemon same too. But Charlie obviously gonna be bringing out the wolf, showing us what this character's got. Mm -hmm. Charlie on this wolf once again is his signature character. And here we go once again. The arrow is coming out. And Greninja has been in the talks for a while. Ever since Smash Four. It's just crazy. Yeah, Smash Four. People have been talking about what Greninja's capable of, but he seems to be in that similar position of Show. Is like when can people start inputting this in tournaments? Yeah. Trying to use it to get push recovery. It's like uh, the three characters I feel like that are in talks for being really good just need more time. It's Shulk, Greninja, and Ice Climbers. That just need that time. Well, I don't know about that last one, but right now this Greninja is doing its work right now. Down turn to the up smash. That's going to be a true combo, and Charlie losing the first stop. Charlie feeling the pressure already. 105 already on his opponents. Always have to get something down. Uses the down tilt and chasing him all the way. If there's one thing I love to see about Charlie is his aerial conversions. He does not, he knows so many that convert into a back air at such earlier percents that you're actually going to get killed off of it. But he needs to be careful, really respecting because Tarek's aerials are looking so good right now. I have still going to be a great parry punish right there. Not able to find the two frame, but he is still trying to get the lead trap. Tarek going to retreat onto the platform. Yeah, he's already able to get away from it. So Tarek, 124%, he just needs, he's just finding these opportunities, he's jumping around, looking for when Charlie will mess up a great Tomahawk from this wolf. He's looking for a two frame, and he almost got away with it, but Tarek, unable to get out of it. <coughs> Here's it once more. Oh my god, what, what are these drag, drag downs? Yeah, but Charlie barely able to get the shield up in time. There's gonna be a punish on the down tilt, down throw into the dash track. Red and butter combo for Charlie, but he has to get something going right now if he wants to make this comeback. And I see Tarek a lot going for these F tilts a lot, tries to convert it to the up smash, but Charlie recognizing Ooh. that catches the Miz tech as well. So he saw Charlie actually was in himself a little bit out because the last time he recognized that Tarek went for it. And great tech from Charlie didn't know to get him out of that situation. Yeah, oh my god. Yeah, he goes for the fair as well. Oh, point blank laser gun. Oh, I don't like about that decision, Charlie, but I, he's able to get back. I feel like that was supposed to be a lead on a roll away. Uh, you know, jumping in as Wolf is very scary uh, for the other person. Mm -hmm. So I feel like he expected Tarek to run roll away and punish it. That laser was the only thing he could do with a cover that. Well, great, great parry coming in. Tarek missing the grab. So these backers are forcing him off. He's got to get out of that corner in order to escape death. But <coughs> Dash Shack unable to find anything. A drag down up here into an M smash. Are you crazy, Tarek? Is this what you're talking about? This character's crazy. That's just crazy, oh my goodness, he's able to get these conversions off. Charlie definitely feeling the pressure right now. We're seeing a similar situation once more, and the back air forces him off stage once again. Tarek, incredible play so far. <coughs> okay, <laughs> ill advised Shadow Sneak, right to Charlie the King Shield, that's gonna be an easy up smash punish. It's like so, clockwork, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's still very dangerous right now for Charlie. He has to play this well if he wants to come back. Because Tarek right now running in time with the dash track, fair into the nail for Charlie, gonna be some damage, but again, resetting it. Feels like Tarek just had the tempo control here. Mm -hmm. But Tarek needs to be careful because one fast fall fair can actually lead into a wolf flash, especially at this percent, this might kill. And T Tarek. Yeah, Charlie has those on deck. He's got that tech down. Look at these parries coming. He's starting to get a down that and reaches the neutral get up. He knew exactly what he was coming for, and he's using the down tilt to force Tarek in a tech situation. But thankfully, he's alive, but a perfectly spaced out fair. Yeah, Ooh. that was a great choice to use the up B right there at an angle. Tarek was definitely looking at punish the side B. Oh, water gun. Just unable to get it. Four throw. Won't be able to kill just yet. It almost did. I was, uh -huh. was going to say that. Oh. Was Crazy stuff. No way! And the up oh, he got him. <laughs> yeah, on top of everything else Twin Ninja has, he also has Hydro Pump that just makes it so difficult to recover. Hydro sometimes. Pump, that's what it's called, not Water Gun. Now I'm thinking about Squirtle, but. Squirtle's is Water Gun, I believe. Wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> It's been a while since I was able to see high-tech Greninja stuff. Last time I was able to see it was uh, I studying, and that was all the way back in Smash 4. Yeah, I mean, we definitely still have Shoto playing the Greninja, doing pretty good. Charlie actually 
uh, was able to take a set off of him last month at Ascension in Arizona. We mm -hmm. took a little trip out there, uh, and he was able to take one. Uh, so he can do it. He just has to be in the right mind for it. But he was definitely close there. It, it, it just felt like clockwork in a sort of way. That Tariff would take a stock, right? Charlie would have to fight hard for it. And he finally kills him, but he's at 40, 50%. And it's the same cycle over and over and over again. So Charlie definitely needs to work a little bit hard to get these stocks down. But Tarek, he's not going to let you get it for it as easy as you think it would be. Now, a lot of whiff punish. If there's something I'd love to see from Tarek, is all these whiff punishes. Anytime Charlie goes for something unsafe or misses something, he's quick to punish, and he's got those conversions in hand. Yeah, right there, Charlie is not able to even do anything out of shield. Tarek jumping into his face with the forward air and immediately getting a grab out. But Charlie's starting to recognize that Tarek loves to go for those aerials right directly while he lands, so uh -oh. these pairs are coming in simple, but Hydro Bomb is able to keep himself a little bit away, but greatly spaced out fair into that back air, so Tarek, 28% only on him. He's such got such a great commanding lead, but one grab oh, on him to find anything. Jump. Yeah, he read the jump, and here come the multi-hits. Sometimes they just don't That's work correctly. <laughs> That's Smash Ultimate for you, and he's oh. got the Wolf Flash, won't kill just yet, but as soon as he said that, it's even up the percent. Yeah, and that's a confidence booster right there. That move is just so flashy when it, no pun intended, yeah. but uh, it's so flashy when it hits that you kind of just feel yourself a little bit more. You get the momentum going when you hit that. That's and, an adrenaline boost move right there. And I love these empty halves from Charlie. These Tomahawks are really pressuring because Tarek's holding that shield. He knows exactly that Charlie likes to go for them, so he's got to be a little more careful because he's oh. a Tarek. Almost dies. It's gonna be okay for now, but Charlie almost kills him with that dash He's attack. On the hunt right now. He's being the apex prayer and these empty hops. It's confusing Tarek a little bit, as you can tell. He's falling for these empty hops. These bluffs are coming in right now, and a great parry into the F tilt. Charlie takes stock number one. Oh, Tarek looking for a hard read right there. Says a lot of players try and will pass me when I run up to them with my invincibility on the angel platform. Oh so no! Not <laughs> What Two is that? Multi-hits.jpg. Multi-hits.jpg is the perfect representation of that. Tarek got robbed not once, but twice on the kill. Down tilt get, doesn't look, get the photo here, but he's looking for that. Oh, goodness. That's just horrible watching that. So Charlie, that's a blessing in disguise for him, but Tarek only 0%. As long as he get a lot of extra credit on top of him, he should be A-OK, -okay, but does get hit up with that one. And I was starting to realize that Charlie, when he's at 100%, he's willing to get grabbed. He's not afraid because he knows it doesn't lead to any kills to the past that one, but Tarek needs to be careful right now because Wolf with Rage, especially when it's Charlie, can do a lot of work. Yeah, back to right there. That's probably not the best DI, but it's not bad enough to get him killed. Can he survive this boat though nope. on the ledge? No. Mm -hmm. Finally gets killed, but look at this conversions from Charlie. I love his aerials. He's able to do so much off of that. The blaster does trade. He catches the mist tech, but here comes the Nair once more. He's got to be careful, Terra, because right now he's got a lot of momentum swing. But Charlie is simply denying that and punishing any time in the back here. Hits him up in the head. So Tarek already at a disadvantage. And those two missed opportunities with those up smashes that weren't his fault are starting to really affect him now. Yeah, I mean, he, Charlie's doing a good job of recognizing Tarek's been approaching with Fodor quite a bit especially falling forward air. He's not doing rising aerials. He has to get that to the apex of his jump before he can start them. However, Charlie can go for a rising back air and meet him halfway and get the kill for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so as you have seen forward in that back air, great. Yeah, the kill. Charlie unable to survive that, so 89%. This is definitely still possible for Tarek if he's 100%. able to get those combo combos down. But look at this Charlie. He's constantly pressuring it, but not with just arrows, but these empty hops and Tarek. Oh my goodness, that backer almost hit him, but great. This time, Charlie knew the dragon up air was coming, so he texts away. Ooh. Now let's find the aerial once more. Tarek, he's feeling the pressure now. He's got to oh get God, something. What a great read from Charlie. Takes game number two. But was it a combination of Charlie's great conversions or read, or was it the fact that Tarek got robbed twice? I think that the second one was definitely Tarek panicked a little bit, um, dashed a little too far, so he didn't, wasn't at the center of the up smash. 
and make the second one not connect because of the first one. I think he got a little panicked with that. Mm -hmm. But, like but, you said, Tarek earlier about that Pokemon trainer. Yeah. Here we go. So we got Charlie versus Derek once again. This is the final game of game number three. Up throw into the up air. Looks for another one. I kind of took it up throw. And he knew that Tarek was going to go for the grab, so Charlie immediately jabs to interrupt it. The Pokemon trainers, they love to go for these grabs, but you got to be careful to not be predictable on the easy conversion from the Nair to F tilt. He shields out the get up attack, but no follow up just yet. A lot of areas on these shields, but. So far, it's working out in Tarek's favor. Yeah, he looks for the up throw into the up throw, but Charlie's just gonna immediately jump out of there and says, I want nothing to do with that. Here it goes, he actually That's, goes for the edge oh guard. Ooh, you can't go for that. Once you overcommit to an edge guard, you can simply get reversal just like that. And especially like you said with Tarek, he's no sleeper on this Pokemon trainer. Definitely not. I'm loving the Vine Whip cancels on the ledge into these neutralers. Great aggressive option right there. And here it comes over and over and over again. Charlie. Game number two. Tarek was feeling the pressure. And right now, it's the complete reverse. Yeah, and I feel like we're seeing Charlie's empty hops and movement like that. It was working really well against the Greninja. But the issue now is that these lasting hitboxes of Ivysaur's mind, or mm -hmm. neutral air rather, uh, are just kind of stuffing out any of those options, whether or not Charlie does something or not. And not able to find anything. So Charlie's got to think of something. And definitely remember, you want to go for those those back airs as well. But oh, great, great tech. tech! He's actually able to escape death because of it. But Tarek, no sleeper on it. Early was for the F smash and up smash. Unable to find anywhere. Charlie's getting a little desperate for the kill. But he's going to be fine. He says jump. I dare you. Yeah. Tarek not going to give in, but <coughs> jump finally does get caught with an up air. I know, but thankfully for that one, does switch immediately to this Squirtle. So you got that little neutral presence, you still got it. But, oh, it actually clipped him out for a little bit. He's going to be forced to go for it. And really good discipline by Charlie. Most Wolf players will go for that Wolf Flash, but he knows that Tarek is ready for it. Yeah, Charlie definitely not a Wolf Flash kind of guy. He's just going to go for these angled uppies instead. Go for the same distance, same angle, uh, but be a little bit more safer, but less reward for it. And he's got to be careful, because when you get grabbed under the platform, it's, it's going to lead to a potential kill, but he's actually able to stay safe. The flamethrower, not enough, and Wolf with Rage can do plenty of things, and you're especially vulnerable. Four throws him off immediately, oh and the God. sweet spot back here. Just the foot is all Charlie needs to take it to stock. Oh my goodness. And the, actually the blaster interrupted the water gun so he's not able to get any charge from it. He floor throws him out and finally takes it, but it's even stock now. Yeah, that was not great DI on that forward throw. Charlie even took a second to laugh like I really did that. Oh my goodness, Charlie. Oh my goodness, look at these conversions. 58% already, disgusting. Charlie's that guy. He's got that on deck. And then Nair catching him out. Here it comes. Both were sitting back to the neutral. Great tech away. He's looking for a quick fair. Okay, so here we go. Switching to the Ivy Star. This is where the game slows down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I feel like that's the last we're going to be seeing of the Squirtle for this set. Hopefully. Uh, but if I'm Terry, oh, I'm definitely not looking Look at these ledge Charlie, traps. Charlie's all over him now. He needs to be careful. Oh, the multi, it's like you were saying, we're able to get him back. Get him past it. He's going for the one-two jab check, but great discipline from Tarek to avoid it. And the F-tilt from him, actually, is able to beat it out. Oh. But you can't do that in front of Charlie's shield. He's able to take it. Game number three, Tarek shaking his head. But what an amazing set by both of them. That was such an intense set, but that, up, that F smash just... It's so sad to see, you know, he... I don't know if that's what he wanted to do or if that was a misinput. Wanted to go for the F-tilt, I bet you. Yeah, that would be my guess.